talk about battery chargers and actually need more than one. Um, one thing I would recommend you get a few chargers, uh, a few of a particular type is this uh, little Schum Schumacher speed charger. This is just a trickle charger. It does one amp per hour. It's not much, right? But I use, I got to think three of these. Yeah, I do have three of these. Um, I use them all the time. And it's pretty cool because what happens is the light goes to green. It starts out yellow and it goes to like a green. It does a float charge. But what I do is after a day or two, I, un I just unplug it, replug it back in so it keeps the battery chopped up. In other words, this charger, what happens with batteries when they sit, they get sulfated, right? Now, this can even occur if you're using your car on a lot of short trips. So I, I use this El Camino a lot of times on short trips, sometimes at night. So I, I always, you know, I got the hood popped open on it, and I throw the charger on it all the time. I always use that thing. And that thing's been pretty damn reliable. I've never had any problems with that. There's, I guess it's not, okay, it's 1.5 amps, not 1 amp. And it automatically senses 6 or 12 volts. It's got, but it's like 20 bucks. So I got a few of them, right? Now, the electronic chargers are better in a lot of ways. And something like this, where you can, use, you can run 2 amps, 6 amps, or 10 amps, or you can run a standard battery, um, glass mat, or gel battery, different types. And it also tells you the voltage. That's, this is a good charger, too. But there's a disadvantage of these electronic chargers. And that is, if the battery is so screwed up, it doesn't have enough voltage get going now obviously if the battery's that screwed up you might have to replace it but then again if it's an emergency or you can't drive somewhere to get a new battery obviously if the battery got that well discharged you might not be able to get it back to life where I don't know maybe it'll last for a year or maybe the last six months but you might want to use it for starting a car over the next couple of weeks and sometimes these electronic chargers will not um, start because they, they don't have just not enough juice in the battery for them to start. That's why you want to have a manual charger like that. Now, I used to have a manual charger. This is Sears one. Actually, this is when Sears was making stuff back in the USA and stuff. Um, it's a good charger. I had another one, a Schumacher. I actually burned it out because I was uh, using it for HHO production and stuff. And it just drew too many amps. It kind of... I had another one. If I if you get one like this, I'd recommend you get one that says two and six amps, not just six amps. Um, and that's the reason I picked that one up because that one's got two, ten, and fifty amps, which could be great for like um, you know if you really got to get a hot shot inside your battery and get it going. But there's also even okay. Say for instance, you can't get the battery. The battery won't. Uh, the discharger will not sense the battery because the battery voltage is too damn low. You can put that type of manual charger on it, and it just throws a charge in there. You might want to put that one on there that has 2 amps, or get one in this size that's 2 and 6 amps. You know, these are cheaper, right? Um, this is smaller. But even that one, it's not, that's not too much money because it's a, it's a manual old school charger. Then once it starts, the battery voltage goes up to a, a point, then you can put this thing on it. Now, I also have um, a Bedini charger, and I actually had another one of these. Um, actually, the, it's it's it works for the desulfation part portion. I forgot what it was. I think it was called a battery minder. This one's a five amp. You're probably better off getting the, the one the Bedini Renaissance charger. That's a five amp versus the ten amp because the ten amp. Somebody told me that it burned out one of their brand new batteries. You know, it doesn't really, it's supposed to stop when it gets up to a certain point, but maybe it didn't stop at the right point and it was 10 amps. So this one, I got one of these, it's, this is 5 amps. I also have a universal charger that's a big box that you can also use for um, doing car batteries of this same type of technology that desulfates the plates. And that one delivers 2 amps. That one actually would be a good one to do a nice slow charge and desulfite the plates. This one works very well too. This one, when you connect it, 
the red lights on and after a while it goes to green sometimes it takes a couple days but a lot of times it will restore battery desulfate the plates that's a good charger it's not that cheap though I forget what it is a few hundred bucks or something 200 bucks I forgot but you can also do this if say you didn't have one of these desulfators say for instance you got a really bad battery you put it on a charger on a manual charger to get it going whereby it gets some charge and this senses it then after this thing is done fully charging it um, say it loses a charge or say the voltage isn't you're testing each cell and you're finding one of the cells isn't up to snuff it's not up to full voltage way it should be well say you don't have one of these things to try to desulfate it what you could do is you get a one or one amp manual charger especially maybe a two amp might work too and just stick it on there and let and leave the the um, the battery caps off make sure to you know the battery's full with distilled water and let it bubble let it let it cook a while a lot of times that'll break it loose sometimes you can actually desulfate the plates <coughs> by overcharging the battery a little bit just let it bubble. I mean, if the battery's no good, you might as well give it a try. I'm not saying this with good batteries. I'm saying this with a battery that's got a bad cell in it or it's got a, still got a weak cell. Maybe it barely starts the car or some garbage. Sometimes you can actually, you know, with the manual charger set on like 2 amps or 1 amp, you, it can break through. So a lot of times this one will restore it, but then, you, you know, if you had one of these jobbers that did two and six amps, you just put it on two amps after it's fully charged up. Let it cook a while with the caps off and in a ventilated area. And I'm talking about if the battery is crappy anyway, it's no good. Sometimes that can actually cause the plates to desulfate. Now one thing I also want to say about this charger, this one actually puts a slight overcharge in it. And that keeps the plates from sulfating up, and if they're sulfated up, it can clean them up a little bit, too. That's another advantage. Now, I'm also showing here a cheap, uh, God, I think it's like a 2-watt solar panel or something. It's really low wattage. Um, a lot of times, I found, I got one battery the last 17 years that was a AutoZone one-year guarantee battery. It finally you know got all screwed up but it did last 17 years it was only guaranteed for one year it was their cheapest battery and the way I it lasted that long was I had that thing on top of the hood or inside the dash I think it was this is I don't think it's waterproof I had it inside the dash uh, yeah this one wait a minute this one is waterproof this one's waterproof the other one I didn't have this one's waterproof um, sometimes you got to just keep them inside you know inside the window uh, this one I used to have up on top of the shed roof too screwed up there and what it did was it, it did such a slight charge I, I don't think it really could charge up a battery and maybe it could after a month maybe if you got a lot of sunlight but it was enough to uh, really keep the charge of the battery uh, up perfect without overcharging it and there's no charge controller on it just a simple one or two watt cheapo solar panel you want to make sure they're waterproof though I had some of the ones I think I did buy a couple of them one of them uh, a pair of them that weren't waterproof and um, I want to break in both of them this one is really old and this one's uh, still around for a long time but that is very good because you know on these newer cars, or well, pretty much every car there is, they got computers, you don't want to disconnect the battery, and they got a slight parasitic draw. So say the car doesn't really have an excessive parasitic draw, they still got a parasitic draw. So if you let the car sit there several months, besides the battery losing its charge, it's got some things in, in the electronics that are pulling some kind of, like it could even just be a uh, clock or the um, what do you call it uh, the settings on the radio for crying out loud it could be something that simple so that's why you want to have something like that with the solar panels as a matter of fact that idea 
with the solar panels with a desulfator what is was adopted by the US military for their vehicles like the Hummers and stuff don't whatever they're using now I don't think they're using Humvees or something new but it works it works you can let the big co- the thing sit there for two years and the batteries like brand new and like I said you don't want something that a panel is so damn big that you have to have a charge controller with it because then it gets more complicated. So again, I'd recommend, you know, this charger is pretty good. You can charge up a battery pretty quick with this. You take out one of these that's like 15 amps. This is us. I had the one that was 15 amps. The one thing I don't like about this charger, it's got a fan in it, and it runs a whole time this thing is on. You can hear this fan going. I think that fan on mine, the other one, broke eventually. Um, this one's simple as crap. As a matter of fact, I mean, it was rain hitting it a few times, and this stupid thing, I don't know, I think they're like 20 bucks a pop. This, I, use, I got three of these. So I used one on the uh, Suzuki uh, four-wheel drive thing, uh, the El Camino, and also the Sebring. I, they, they're always plugged in all the time. And... It does a slight overcharge, like I said, which keeps the plates desulfated. It, but you know one thing, you definitely, definitely, if you gotta, if if you're gonna have, say, two chargers, you want to have one of them that's manual, and I would recommend one that says two and six amps, not just six amps. But I got what I did was when it, my other one broke, because I was it, it, actually that thing would have been fine. It was like. Uh, I was uh, experimenting with HHO and running HHO, and it started pulling so many amps, it burned it out. And um, I went up replacing it with this one. That has two amps charge in it. So, you know, you need that. You need, you need the manual charger for basically two things. One is if your battery is so damn low that the electronics charger won't sense it, that's one. Number two, if after you charge your battery up with, say, an electronic charger, and I don't think you'd have that problem with the Bedini, but um, because it desulfates the place, and say you still got a weak cell, and say the car barely cranks over and you're checking all the cells for voltage and one of them's low, well, it's still sulfated. A lot of times, you know, I mean, you don't want to do this on a, a good battery, but if the battery is going to be trashed anyway, I and mean, you might be wanting to use it for a couple more months, especially in the summer weather or something, you wanted to uh, you would want to put it on like a one or two amp manual charger, and with the caps off, and let the, let the thing bubble for a while with it being full, and sometimes it breaks loose the sulfation on on the one bad cell, and then. You know, I mean, it's just a limit to how long the damn things will last. I know there's things out there sometimes, these real, real expensive battery restorers. Um, you know, they could probably restore just about any battery out there. But then, you know, if you're paying 1500 bucks for a battery charger restorer, you could buy a lot of batteries with that. So it's, it's a matter of cost, you know. This thing, I think, is worth it. Um, probably... The one I have actually inside that I use for everything, it's kind of big. Uh, it's a big box. It's uh, the universal one from Renaissance. That one runs two amps, and you could charge a battery, a car battery up with that. It might take you a while, but, you know, that might be better than... It's more money than this, though. It's more money than this. But I would, I would steer away from the 10-amp version of this Renaissance Bedini charger, because I heard... I heard I heard one person tell me something bad about it. Maybe maybe had a, maybe they had a defect. I don't know. I've had no problems with that thing. This thing it did, did seem to restore batteries, but you know when I find a battery is getting really, but I, I most of my batteries last a good seven years. Like this battery is in this thing right here is a Group Twenty Seven. It's an extra large battery, and. Um, it's probably been in there about five years, but it's always had the trickle charger on it, so it's like, you know, it's still like new. But I think the next time I might put on this car is an Odyssey. Not, um, 
Odyssey, which to me is like the top of the line, man, or something like maybe, I don't know, maybe something that the truckers use, but Odyssey is the top of the line as far as I'm concerned, but that's, you're, you're talking like a $250 battery, but you know, I might get something like that, but um, just make sure that you don't just get an electronic charger, make sure you get a manual charger, you definitely will need it, even if it's just two amps, and that's all it does, because you'll need it for other applications, and I like those things, I got three of those, they seem to be very rugged, foolproof. I mean, you could see there's, you know, it's dirt and dust and moisture gets all around it and things still working for years. So, not so much with this one. This one I keep in a toolbox. See, it's got a fan on it. The other one, uh, I remember it got wet and it just killed the fan and replaced it with this one. There's another one that does. Uh, I think it's 2, 6, and 15 amps. This one's 2, 6, and 10. But, you know, it's good enough. I don't use this one too much, to tell you the truth. The one I use the most is that one. And second most is that one. But there's applications where I need the manual one. So I got two manual ones. Very important you keep a manual charger.